hello again and welcome to afterlife artistry today's video is going to be a pinning video but also how to mount your pin beetles two ways so into a frame or into a dome uh let's get into the video Base in your Okay, the first part is rehydrating your beetle. So you just need a sealable tub and inside you pop some dampened tissue paper, or kitchen towel, not sodden, and then I place a piece of tin foil or paper will do over the top. Pop your beetles in and then place that in the fridge for two days so they rehydrate. That makes them flexible so you can then pin them into position. Next thing you need is some pinning board. Now these are quite cheap on Amazon, you can get like 10 sheets for, I think it was like £8 or something, really reasonable. And you need some pins, just any old sewing pins are fine. You might want some entomology pins if your beetles are smaller, just because some of the bigger pins just will break them. Next you need some side tracing paper or like for holding the wings into place if you're spreading the wings on your beetle. I just use the empty bit of the back of my labels from my label printer. It comes in handy and it's recycling. So then next you get your beetle specimen. And you pop it on the board. Now this one's already got pinned through it because it's been set by someone else. Obviously I want to change the way it looks. And push it into the board on that pin. Now because I'm going to spread the wings on this one, I need to move the legs out of the way those second pair of legs otherwise the wings will go over the top of them you won't be able to see them at all just be gentle because they can be very fragile now this is not the final position i'm just moving them up out the way next i'm going to push a big pin right through the central part the beetle avoiding the wings so obviously then I can spread the wings from underneath Now I just want to take the original pin out of the beetle so that it doesn't get in the way of the wings. It's actually been placed through where the wings are. A bit fiddly so I'm just going to stop the camera and then loosen it out and there we go the pin's out. So we pin it back in through where we've pinned it in the central part of the body just below the head. And now what you want to do is carefully lift the top bits of the wings, so the body, the casing, wing casing. I'm not sure if that's why I have to ask Phil. Just lift it up carefully. You might hear a bit of cracking, that's okay. Just be gentle. Just to loosen it so you can then pull the wings out from underneath. Now 
And then we want to get some tweezers because I find it easier with tweezers initially anyway. Just so you're not going to damage those fragile wings. And there is a big vein under there. Now you might want to have a little look first. It is going to take some practice. It's you know it's quite a difficult thing to do without ruining everything and just slide it out see where I'm pulling from the main part of the vein on the wing top vein then you want to spread that wing up gently and get your piece of paper get your wing into position and I'm just sticking a pin on the side of the body so it doesn't move around while I'm trying to get my wing into position without it falling back down. There we go. So you just hold your wing in position. Try not to press too many fingers on the wings. You don't want to damage them. Once you've got it into your position, like gently hold over the paper and then pop your pins in around the wing either side. And this will hold it in place until it's dry. And now we're going to do the other side. Now I'm just going to add that being right handed I find it def incredibly difficult for some reason to do the opposite side on the left hand side so that's why it takes me a little bit longer I use my hands and the tweezers and anything I can get hold of basically um, just because it's, it's just a little bit more fiddly doing that other side Now I'm just going to pop a pin next to the left side of the body, stop it moving again. And also I'm just going to pin this leg up out of the way. Now I'm just pressing down the wing casing part of the body just to flatten it back down a bit.
Now that's the wings finished, so they will spread out beautifully. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can have a good look. I'm very pleased with how they come out, and now they do have a little bit of damage because this is an old beetle that's been rehydrated. But I still think it looks lovely. And then you just want to use some entomology pins or any pins, but I'm just using the entomology ones as a thinner to just position your legs where you want them. I usually just like them to look symmetrical, natural. So now that's all finished and we I'm going to show you how to frame beetles. So here I'm just gluing some scroll leaf wallpaper onto the backing piece that has come out of the frame. Trimming its size. And the next part is to make sure you get your beetles into the right places so they are central um, so I usually take a tape measure find the central part then measure exactly one third then two thirds into it you have to excuse me my maths is dreadful and then the same from that point you've measured top to bottom so you find like a central area so it looks good is a guide really especially when you're uh, placing two beetles into a frame it's a bit easier with one because you can sort of see where the middle is but when you're doing two you need to make sure there's enough space between the beetles um, from either edge of the frame edges then you need to remove your pins from your dried beetle now beetles take about a week to dry so make sure you keep them somewhere safe and away from mites or moths or anything like that because it will eat it. I use some fly mesh now to cover my taxidermy to stop um, any bugs getting in there and eating them. Then using your pencil guide, just want to position your beetles before you go sticking them onto the paper. Just so you know that they're going to look okay, it's in the right position. Because once you stick them down, they're not coming back off without breaking them. Now this is a male and a female beetle. I can't remember the names of them, but I can pop it on screen. Actually, Phil... Barber is now the owner of this frame because he bought it from me at the Bristol Invert Show. So as you can see where I pencil line them, they're not quite right. So you just need to adjust as you go along. Now the only thing that I haven't videoed on here is what I also do is I use my label printer to print out the names of the species and common name if they have on the beetle and then I stick them underneath them which you can see in the end product.
then I get some craft glue, glue it to the bottom of the beetles carefully. I'm using a pin here because I was nearly running out of glue. But I really hate wasting the last bit, so I always cut the glue in half, the bottle in half, so I can get the last bits out. And then you press firmly and remove the pin. And that's them stuck in. I'm just using the tape measure again just to check that they're not too dissimilar either side or too high, too low. A little bit of adjustments. It can be a little bit flexible but like I said once they're stuck firmly you're not getting them back off. That's why you want to double check everything first. And then we are coming to the final piece and here's the frame. So the next part is how to then mount a beetle into a dome. Now this is a jar that I bought from Ikea. It's about £6.50 I think. It's just a food jar. I turn them upside down rather than the cloches as they are can be rather expensive. Nice bit of wood that I foraged and dried out myself and then we just use some I'm actually using super glue today which I don't usually do but my craft glue hasn't arrived so we just use some glue to pop in the wood firstly yeah I'm too over generous with glue as you can see and then we will just want to hold it for a short amount of time just to get it stuck And then we're going to add some dried moss around the edges. And it's a time lapse, just so you don't have to sit there watching it all. And then you want to leave that to dry. About 10 minutes. And then I've got some dried roses that have been hanging, that I bought from Tesco or anywhere you can buy them from anywhere not just Tesco and then just you want to hang them upside down let them dry out for a couple of weeks then they can be used you pop some glue on the ends and then place them where you'd like them Now once you've let that dry for a while, 
you can then get your beetles that you want to use to put into your dome. Here is some that I had from earlier. I use some atlas beetles. I'll pop the scientific name up on the screen if I can find it. It's beautiful male. I'm not sure if the other ones are female or if it's a different species. I'm still learning beetles myself at the moment. If anyone can tell me in the comments, that would be helpful. Thank you. Now I usually use the pin as a guide so I can find out where I want to pop it. Be careful as well because you you don't want to place it in and it doesn't fit in the jar so just be aware of that especially when they have big horns like this one a little bit of fiddly a little bit of artic discretion artist discretion i'm just using a pin like i said as a guide and i usually use the pin to pop it like stick it and then you can either snip the end of the pin off once it's dry or take the pin out if it will come back out just be careful and then you want to pop some glue onto your beetle and then you can stick it into place Now, as you can see, I've changed my mind a few times where I want this beetle to go. Now I find a place that I think it looks good. Just stuck it in place. I'll leave that to dry. It's looking good so far. What do you think? I was going to put a different male on with this one, but it didn't fit. So I took him off as it didn't, the what I was saying earlier about the jar was the lid, it just didn't fit on. So I'm using the other one that was originally with it. I'm just gluing this one up now and then I'm going to find a nice spot for it.
and there we go that's the second one on I just want to add that I took some scissors and I just trimmed around the edges so the jar will go down properly and it looks a bit neater with the moss and I also added a couple more roses just to make it look a bit nicer obviously it's what you like and what you decide that you like on your do in your dome and I will take show you a couple of photos of the finished piece So, how did you find that video? If you have any questions or need any pointers, then please feel free to contact me. Uh, my details are in the description. Uh, also, if you need any taxidermy or pinned work commissions done for yourself, then please contact me. I'm more than happy. If you want something done that's like today with beetles, or if you have a past loved one of an invert that you want framed or done, then let me know. I'm more than happy to come up with some ideas with you. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, to subscribe to my channel, then please click here and notification bell for future videos. Thank you so, so much to everyone that has supported me so far. I can't believe how, well, well, just the support has been amazing. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Face in your face.